Hey everybody, Tony and Purchase here again and we're taking another look today at my Rogers 725B that I've been repairing and we're going to do some modifications today. Specifically, we're going to hot rod the audio system on this organ by adding some additional amplifiers, additional speakers, and some effects processors. So let's take a look. Now here we have the main amplifier on the instrument. This is the internal amplifier that runs the internal speaker system. Now here we have where the audio input comes in from the preamp board. And this line here was originally connected right here. So I've clipped that and I've put in these solderable uh, tabs here. And this is so I can extend. This is the stereo output from the preamp board and this will become our reverb send and then these will be extended in a similar way to go over to our patch bay and this way we can uh, input a whole lot of other stuff into this main amplifier. Okay, so what we've got here is our finished setup. Here's our output from the uh, preamp spliced into this new cable. Then I used a simple splice joint on the amplifier input and sealed it off with some shrink tubing. Both those wires head back over and are looped nicely into the existing wiring over to our a little light on that back side of our patch bay so what we have is our output and input and this gives us a insert point where we can put in effects and reverb and uh, do some interesting things with this instrument okay so this organ is set up with a set of uh, internal speakers and there's an amplifier built in to run those. It's also equipped to run a four channel external audio system and you can use these switches on our preamp circuit board here to set it up to be kind of a little of both and that's what I'm going to be doing. My two main channels will be my flute and my diapason channel and those will continue to run on the internal audio with the main amplifier. I'm adding two additional amplifiers that will be attached to the external outputs. One will be running the subwoofer and the other will be running the reed channel. I've done that by wiring in this junction board here which allows me to interrupt the signal. So I've got the output on these first two, uh, on this side I've got the outputs of our preamp board and then I've got the inputs of our amplifiers, the main amplifiers and the additional amplifier. This allows me to create an effects loop and the flute and diapason are going to have graphic equalizer, pitch shift, and reverberation. The reed channel will have reverberation only and the subwoofer will be left alone. You can see these two additional amplifiers that I've mounted inside the console. These are normally used when speakers are external and they're set up for that. They have a 12 volt relay on them so when you turn on the console they click on remotely. Uh, but in the case of how I'm setting this up, the speakers, whether I take this out for a show or just use it here in the house, are always going to be in close proximity of the console so there's really no reason to have that extra complexity. So I can set these up right here and to do that I've put in this additional electrical outlet so we have a brand new power cord coming in from the wall then we have a line wired in to go to the uh, main power supply and that's the normal way things are set up. Then I have an additional line which goes over here to my box for my additional outlets and those are switched. There's an additional switch run in to switch those from the console. Okay, so here we have a little closer look at the external sockets. And those would normally have a cable 
it would end up with an end piece like this that plugs into our amplifier and that provides both the audio signal and the 12 volt relay signal to turn the amplifier on. So these will go around here and hook into, I'll wire them into the appropriate external socket and then to create the effects loop for the trumpet channel I've got this additional audio cable and it will go from my panel, my insert panel, down to the socket. So I have my line plugged into the amplifier. I've got it routed over here. Now we just need to cut it to length, strip it, tin it, and solder it in place. The way they do this at the factory is they like to cut this braided part short and then it tucks in nice and tight and then you can bring the insulated line back around and I'm going to follow suit with that. Okay, so it looks like we've got everything together now. We've got our two new amplifiers wired in with a switchable power source. They come on uh, automatically with the uh, when the organ comes on. Then we have over here we've got our interfaced system where we've tied into the back side of the appropriate uh, sockets. Now the nice thing about this is that this sets up the system the way I like it. The amplifiers are all inside uh, the organ and uh, we can still use the external sockets. You can just plug directly into them and everything will work just fine. That traces up to the back side of our patch bay which creates our insert points for the effects loops that we're using and I have a power source, that's the back side of the power source, and that's for all of the effects devices are plugged into that. And then I have that set on a switch that's underneath the console uh, key deck. Okay, so here's the effects devices that I'm inserting into the organ's signal path. Now the first thing is the flute and the diapason are going to go through a graphic equalizer. Now you can see the bend that I've done here is a little odd, but that's because I'm shaping the overall tone color of those two voices to make them a little more musical, a little more pipe-like. The next device is this effects processor and it's set up to do pitch shift. So the diapason is actually shifted flat by a couple of cents and the flute is shifted sharp by a couple of cents. And when you listen to them together, as I'll demonstrate later, there's a nice, pleasant, gentle undulation because now I've got two separate uh, tone sources. The trumpet is going to be left alone. The reed stop is going to be left alone. Then those two, this is all on the, the, the two main channels of the organ. Then we also go through this reverb device. Now by running the reed on a separate channel output, I'm not going to be able to go through this reverb system and I don't want it pitch shifted. So my solution, I'm going to try out this uh, uh, guitar stomp box reverb unit on the reed channel and see if I can get a good match uh, between uh, the, for the, the reed channel. And if that doesn't produce satisfactory results, I've got this uh, Alesis effects processor that I can put into that channel to create that. Okay, so we've got everything all back together. I've done some voicing work. 
We have my effects processors tucked in behind the music rack. And in my little tiny studio space here, we got to get really creative about where we put additional speakers. The internal audio, of course, are running the flute and the diapason channel. Then over here, tucked in behind the little table in the projector, is the subwoofer. And then if we come back this way, past my MIDI keyboard, and we see the speaker for the read channel tucked into the corner here, right underneath this beautiful painting that my wife created. So I have long argued that the biggest shortcoming of older organs is not the lack of realism in the individual tone colors, but it was the lack of that multi-rank ensemble that makes an organ sound like an organ. And the effects processors that I've set up here and breaking everything out to multiple channels is the thing that makes that difference. Our principal, our trumpet, and our flute are now just a skosh out of tune with each other. Not enough that it sounds out of tune, but enough that it generates that multi-rank ensemble. On top of that, I'm going to do a tuning trick, and I'll show you that in a future video, that will further enhance that multi-rank ensemble characteristic. Now we can talk about this all we want, but why don't we hear what it sounds like? So, did you like that video? Would you like to see more? Well, there's three ways you can help. First and most important, please subscribe to my page. Also, go over and visit my Patreon page and see how you can get exclusive content. Or, if you'd like to just leave me a little gratuity, you can do so on PayPal, and you can find those links in the video description. Thank you.